Well, now we move on to the next section in the transmitter receiver lecture. We're going to talk about the receivers and waveform generators. Okay, first we have the high power pulse that's transmitted, and then we delay while we're listening for signals coming back from the radar, and then we send out another pulse. And here is the receive window, where we're listening, and these are the analog to digital converter samples that we'll get back from targets after the transmit pulse. This is the receive window. And then we have the du duplexer switch, the TR switch, which turns the transmitter on for sending out the pulse, and then turns the receiver on and the transmitter off, and then vice versa. And one of these cycles is called the radar's pulse repetition interval. The sensitive re radar receiver has to be isolated from that powerful radar uh, signal, and the transmitted power is typically 10 kilowatts to a megawatt, and the received signal's uh, power is in the tens of microwatts to a milliwatt. So isolation has to be uh, supplied by that duplexer switching, and we'll look in detail uh, as we go on in the lecture as to how that's done. The purpose of the, re of the receiver is to extract those very, very weak radar echoes from the antenna and to amplify them and then pass them on into the signal processor for Doppler processing and pulse compression, and then we'll employ a matched filter optimized to the, tra to the transmit pulse, which will give us out of it the maximum peak signal to mean noise ratio. Now, uh, the target's presence will be made, the decision for a, of a target will be made by a computer after we put thresholdings in of, of an adaptive threshold like we've talked about in the past. And most radar receivers are what we call super heterodyne. They just don't, we just don't generate a signal in the um, waveform generator that's at the same frequency at, that we're going to transmit. We, we shift the frequency of, that we used in the, in, when we developed the first signal uh, to an intermediate frequency and amplify that sometimes, but there's going to be a shift in frequency to an, which, we, which is the IF, and then there'll be, uh, it's, it's transmitted up to the, to the main frequency. So there's a series of frequency shifts that go on. Some will have two, two sets, in this particular examples we'll be showing you'll be there'll be one intermediate frequency. It's easy to easier to obtain match filter shape, bandwidth gain, and stability if we go through this process. And the first stage, front end of the receiver, is a low noise amplifier, usually just a transistor, and we'll use sensitivity time control to control the gain of the uh, on receive of the signal coming in in the receiver. Now, this is a, a, a view graph which shows you the shared functionality in waveform generation and the receiver. Here we have uh, a waveform generator, which will, in this case, is just a, uh, a bump, and then it's amplified. And you notice down here we have a local oscillator. And what we do is we mix this signal with the local oscillator, and we take out the the, uh, the sum frequency, which is filtered first, and we come out to the antenna with the frequency of the local oscillator uh, on it. And then when we come from the antenna, we've got a much, much smaller signal. We go through a filter, and then we down convert subtracting off that frequency and then amplify it in a low noise amplifier and then go to analog to digital conversion. The waveform generator you can see 
and the receiver, the waveform generator up here and the receiver down here, and they have several similar features. The frequency conversion, amplification, and filtering. Now this is an example which shows you these concepts. Uh, here we have the waveform generation and a block diagram of the receiver. We'll have a waveform that is generated in the waveform generator of a, that will be at a frequency of about uh, a tenth of a gigahertz and it's mixed with this local oscillator in the up converter to S-band at 3.0 gigahertz. So we have up conversion from base band to S-band. And the up converter shifts the waveform frequency to a higher frequency. And the reason is waveform generators are a lot less costly when you do it at 100 megahertz and not at full 3 gigahertz. In the receiver, we down convert the received S-band signal by mixing it with a, a local oscillator that's at 2.9 gigahertz. We're here we're doing a subtraction in frequency, not an addition. The down converter subtracts the two frequencies and the signal coming out will be uh, of 100 megahertz bandwidth into the A to D converter. This down converter will shift the frequency to a, a lower frequency and the reason is high dynamic range of A to D converters is much easier to achieve at lower frequencies such as from 0 to 100 megahertz. Now the simplified block diagram of the waveform generator and the receiver is here so you can see it all in its glory with an SBN system. Only one stage of conversion is illustrated here and usually multiple stages of frequency conversion and filtering and amplification are used. But here we have the waveform generator, amplification and filtering and then up conversion and then the filter. All this section in the dotted blue line is the waveform generator subsystem. And then we'll go into the high power amplifier. And if this, this system does not generate enough power to feed the high power amplifier, there'll be an intermediate power amplifier in between. We'll do, just do an amplification process. And then we'll go into the duplex of the transmit receive switch. Okay, now we have when the signal comes back, we'll have a filter that has a bandwidth of 3 gigahertz that will get rid of all spurious signals, and then a very low noise amplifier. And then we'll down convert from this local oscillator, which is very stable, the 3 gigahertz minus the 2.9 gigahertz will be down converted to that baseband after going through some amplification and filtering and then it will go to the A to D converters. Okay? Now this is looking in a little more detail and a little more complexity at the whole radar receiver. It's uh, saying, well there'll be control signals saying exactly what waveform we want to generate. Most radars can generate a lot of different signals that they can transmit. And so there'll be information going into the waveform generator as to exactly uh, what FM waveform or, or CW pulse we want to generate in the waveform generator. And then it will be mixed here with, in a, with a mixer. Uh, in this reference oscillator section, this first of all, a, a very stable local oscillator. And that is, its frequency is generated from a reference oscillator that's extremely stable. And this stable local oscillator will then be mixed with the intermediate frequency, with the modulated frequency from the waveform generator subsystem with the stable local oscillator. And that will generate the RF signal to the transmitter subsection. 
so that the local oscillator is the RF frequency at S band, the 3 gigahertz, minus this intermediate frequency. On receive, after coming through the, the duplex of the TR switch, there'll be a limiter, a low noise amplifier, and then there'll be a, a series of two mixers which will demodulate down to baseband the in phase and the quadrature channels the I and the Q, the real and the imaginary part, and if we designate one part that goes directly in as the baseband, if we apply minus 90 degrees shift uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the signal coming in relative to the baseband, we'll have just baseband coming out. And then the data will be well, coming out in the two channels, the real and the imaginary part, out of the A to D converter, and that will go onto the digital signal processor. Now on to other transmitter uh, and receiver subsystems. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to next uh, go to, first go to duplexers, and then other transmitter subsystems, uh, pulse modulators and, and crowbars that you saw back in the transmitter. And then we'll look at the waveguides and transmission lines and, and other things. Okay. This is how a duplexer works. When the transmitter is on, we want to turn off the line which goes from the, the, the switch to the limiter and the receiver so that the receiver won't get blown up by the very high power transmit signal. So we want to connect them and have very low loss. Have the antenna transmitter connected here with very low loss and have the receiver protected while the transmitter is transmitting the signal. When the transmitter is off, we want to cut that line and have the receiver and the antenna connected at very low loss. And the receiver uh, limiter protector is employed for additional protection against strong interference or, or transmitter feed through. And this is how, in a macro sense, this is the function of the duplexer and the, the, the switching. The duplexer is a very fast acting device which allows that pulse uh, the, the radar pulse to time share the same antenna with a receiver and a transmitter. On transmission, as I said before, the duplexer is protected from damage or burnout. On reception, the signals, the receiver echo to the re receiver, uh, the receive echo to the receiver and not the transmitter. Uh, it's got to be done very, very quickly in microseconds or nanoseconds. For very high power radars, the duplexer is a transmit receive switch, a gas de discharge device, and the very high pulse from the transmitter causes a gas dis discharge device to break down and short circuit the receiver to protect it from uh, damage. On receive, the, re the RF circuitry in the duplexer directs the echo signal into the receiver rather than the transmitter as we said and we need 60 to 70 dB of isolation i.e. going from a megawatt on transmit to the order of a watt on receive. Now here's how a balanced duplexer would work in the transmit configuration. We have over this end connecting to the receiver protector and here we have the exit out to the transmitter and then we have a port to the antenna and then we have a dummy load and uh, for my amateur radio station which has basically the same issue only it only operates at a kilowatt of, of uh, peak power it, it's a, uh, a gallon of oil which a coax connector is applied to and a rod where the ohmic losses just dissipate in that gallon of, of of oil. We have to do it very differently for these high power systems. In the transmit condition, 
the, the we have dual transmit receive tubes that turn off and isolate the antenna uh, going to the transmitter from the antenna going to the receiver. And we do this with a, um, a hybrid coupler. So what happens is the transmitter sends its energy out and it bounces off the back end and then out the antenna and also out and is reflected off the back of the short slot hybrid junction and goes out to the antenna. Now, this is what would happen under, under the, the dummy load. So the duplexer cannot always do the entire job of protecting the receiver, and in diode and ferrite limiters are used to additionally protect the receiver over here. So that's the function of this receiver protection. And uh, it's also to protect the receiver from radiation from other radars that do not activate the duplexer. Now in the receive mode, the energy from the antenna will come down, and this will go straight through the hybrid junctions, and this dummy load, it, it is turned off and, and, and the return signal will just go right through to the receiver protector and into the receiver. The duplex, as I said, we can't do the whole job and uh, we've gone over these in the previous view graph, but this is the receive condition of what happens when you have a balanced duplexer implemented in this way. Now looking at other transmitter subsystems we glossed over uh, we have the pulse modulator, and its function is to turn on and off the transmitter uh, to generate the desired waveform. And what you need, first of all, you have that energy source that's just waiting to send out a blast of energy, and between pulses what it does is it energy in an, from an external source, the transmitter, is accumulated in an energy storage element which charges up, big like a capacitor. And there's a charging impedance, and then you store the energy up. And these are very large, massive devices. And this switches off. Okay? Now, when the pulse is ready to be formed, the switch is closed. And this stored energy is quickly discharged through the load to form the DC, the DC pulse that's applied to the RF power system. So this is the path things take when we want to transmit. During discharge, the charging impedance, when we want to discharge that, that that energy quickly, uh, the the charging impedance prevents the the energy from being returned to the energy source with the switch. Now let's think more about that switch. The power amplifier tubes can develop internal arc discharges with little warning, and the capacitor bank discharges large currents through the arc. And the tube can then be really seriously damaged. So you need a device, which was called a crowbar device. It places a short circuit across the capacitor bank to transfer its stored energy, which we saw in the last uh, view graph. When a sudden surge of current due to a fault of a protected power tube is sensed, in microseconds that crowbar switch is activated and, and the current surge also causes the circuit breaker to open, which de-energizes the primary source of power. And so it's a safety switch uh, to not destroy a half a million dollar uh, power amplifier tube. 